If you've ever wondered about some of the dangers and side effects of transitioning to a ketogenic diet, then this video is for you. In a previous video I made a few months back, I revealed my entire eating plan and gave an unbiased review of how I transitioned to a ketogenic and eventually a carnivore diet. Before this, I had no health issues and I was following the common 40-30-30 diet split where 40% of my intake was from carbs, 30% was from protein, and 30% was from fat. I mentioned in that video that my experience switching to a high fat diet didn't come without some issues. I experienced nausea, muscle cramps, and an irregular heart rate, and also had trouble sleeping on numerous occasions. I also had really bad chest pain multiple times too, to the point where I had a couple of visits to the doctor to get an ECG. So what exactly was happening to me, and were these signs that the ketogenic diet is dangerous for your health? Well, this is what I'll be covering in this video, and I'll also be showing you what you should really be concerned about if you decide to follow a ketogenic diet. Now let's get into it. Doing what I did a few months back with my diet produced some great results in my body composition, as well as my overall mood and energy levels. But there is something you need to be aware of if you're looking to follow a ketogenic diet. If you transition to a high fat diet like I did, it's gonna have an effect on your insulin, the main storage hormone in your body. Now it may come as no surprise to you that many people go on a ketogenic diet to lose weight and better manage their insulin. However, a few people realize that insulin also plays a role in regulating your body's fluid and electrolyte balance. And it does this in part by influencing how much sodium your kidneys reabsorb and retain. You see, when there are less carbs in your diet, there is less blood sugar spikes and less insulin release to manage these spikes. Thus, lower insulin levels caused by carb restriction can lead to your kidneys excreting more fluid, but also more sodium along with it. Now, your body requires sodium to maintain fluid balance in your body, and sodium plays a key role in regulating the balance of fluid both inside and outside of your cells. Sodium binds to water in your body, and when there's excess sodium, your body holds onto water to dilute it. This is why your body often retains more water when you consume foods that are high in salt. Because sodium binds to water, when you excrete more fluid from your body, such as in the case of ketogenic diet, you'll also excrete more sodium along with it. That's a simple explanation. These processes are very complex and vary from person to person, but you get the idea. Lower carbs equals greater fluid excretion. But that's not the whole story. When you excrete more fluid, you not only excrete more sodium, you also excrete other important electrolytes too, particularly potassium and magnesium. Sodium, potassium, and magnesium are electrolytes that have similar functions, and they also need each other to work together. Electrolytes are important because they allow for your cells to conduct electrical charges. Hence, an adequate amount of electrolytes is not only essential for maintaining fluid balance in your body, but also nerve and muscle function, blood volume and pressure, and various other chemical reactions too. For example, your muscles not only need calcium to contract, but they also need sodium and potassium too. When these substances become imbalanced, it can lead to excessive muscular contraction, weakness and cramping, but it can also lead to things like headaches, nausea, fatigue, and an irregular heartbeat. The problem with my transition to a ketogenic diet a few months back and why I experienced so many of these side effects was mainly due to not adjusting my electrolytes. And I don't regret this because at the time I was trying to keep my dietary experiment as controlled as possible and not manipulate these variables, particularly salt and water intake. I knew these two in particular have a huge impact on a person's body weight, so I decided to keep my intake the same throughout the entire 16 weeks. However, once that 16 week block was up, I introduced more electrolyte supplementation into my diet and continued doing keto for longer. I decided to take five grams of sodium per day, 400 milligrams of magnesium per day, and three grams of potassium per day. And within a few days, all my symptoms resolved. Now, these are my own personal electrolyte intakes, and I'm not recommending these per se. They're based on my own investigation and research, and I encourage you to do your own if you're considering going keto. If you're wondering which particular types of sodium, potassium, and magnesium I used, I'll put a link to these in the description. So if you're getting some of the symptoms that I had, or even others, don't dismiss the ketogenic or even carnivore diet, but instead look into your electrolytes first. You'd be surprised by how much of a difference they make and how many symptoms will disappear when you get them right. It's also wise to get a qualified professional to look at your diet periodically too and see what might be amiss. And that applies to whatever diet you're on, especially the conventional high carb diet. It's interesting that people question ketogenic and high fat diets about many unfounded health risks, but few people raise questions about the adverse effects of the conventional high carb diet that they're on. That is until it's usually too late. I can attest that becoming fat adapted has definitely enhanced my overall mood and energy levels and it's done wonders for my mental health too. The body composition results were a good bonus too, but these definitely weren't the main motivator for me. If you're wondering how you might transition over to your own high fat diet, be sure to check out my other video that I mentioned earlier. I'll put a link to this in the description below. That's all from me. Feel free to leave a comment if you learned something from this video and I'll see you next time.